Got a nice little square here. God man, that'll make another good one. Okay, just for illustration. So there's a song I rediscovered in the past week. I Burn For You by Sting. If you're an Omar Hakim diehard, you'll recognize this instantly. Because it was one of the highlights of the 1985 film, Bring On The Night, and Omar's absolutely electric drum solo provided a lot of the jazz face moments for the whole record in a single song. Anyway, I guess it's time to leak the fact that my next Could Nate Do The Gig video will deal with the band that played this concert, Sting's so-called Blue Turtles band. So I'll be tackling three classics from the group, but if you're covering a band that includes Omar, you have to cover I Burn For You. Which is why I wanted to spend an entire video on what makes this song particularly hard to cover, even when you're not learning it verbatim. Today on 8020, what makes the Omar solo on I Burn For You so hard? Stay tuned. And dudes, quick sponsor message. You can help you by helping me help you help me help you. Which is to say, we're gonna have a lot of beats in this lesson. If you like transcriptions of those, you don't have to do it yourself. We've got a free download for you. Just click below the player to get it. All right, on with the show. So there are certain things you can play on your journey as a drummer that make you feel pretty good. Like, well, I definitely couldn't have done that in 2004. Then there are other things you try to play and you're like, mm, still have a lot to learn. The Omar solo in I Burn For You is like that. Let's see the context. Dark stage, moody jazz waltz, spotlight on sting, vibraphone riff, super 80s. Then you've got Omar playing sort of a weather report Birdland type of beat. Cross sticks on all the downbeats, and a Tony Williams spangling with the lead hand on the hats. So the first challenge of this song is you have to play fast and slow at the same time. If you think about what the right hand is doing, it's Miles Davis. It's up-tempo swing. And the cross stick on quarter notes increases the sense of urgency. This has to bounce. It can't feel weighty or the whole thing drags. But over the top of that, the other instruments are playing long, sustained notes. So underneath it all, it's a waltz with a backbeat. But that can't drag. This is what jazz musicians call adult tempo. Something that sounds easy but isn't. Just for illustration. We internet drummers have a sweet spot. A tempo where we can switch from sex to 30 seconds and know everything's gonna be okay and it'll sound hot. Just like the selfie cam and shooting yourself from your good side. A good musical veteran knows that's great. Now play me a waltz with the backbeat. All of a sudden, that's going to rush or drag. If you're not subdividing, the backbeat's not gonna be right in the sweet spot. Or if you do subdivide, it risks being weighty and draggy, or not clean. Now, let's go back to Omar and the song. So the turning point of the song is when the song changes key and goes to the chorus. It's here that Omar switches seamlessly to that big beat and literally plays a slow waltz on the snare drum. Let's cut to me playing that with the recording.
Now, let's illustrate what makes it so hard. To do that, I'm going to loop the transition from the verse beat to the chorus beat, and try to make it feel as smooth and organic as Omar does. It has to feel like butter. Next, I'm going to try to mix in some fills with sixteenths in that slow 3-4 bar. You can tell how difficult it is when the drums are isolated. Let's listen to Omar play it one more time. But obviously, the hard part of the solo is the solo. There's just one chorus, then the outro, and Sting, Branford, Omar, and the band build to a climax over the next two minutes. First, it's the weather report groove, just busier. Then he goes to the crash cymbal. At just the right moment, he transitions back to the backbeat. But, and this is crucial, now he's keeping the hat on all the eights. Another example of he makes it look easy. But if I told you to play a Tony Williams beat in a big three with the backbeat, not so easy. This is basically what you have to do. Even slowed down, it's not easy. The first thing that can go wrong is you've got a lot of notes to line up, and they could simply not line up. Or they could line up, but just be weighty and ponderous, or drag. Probably the best way to practice this is take out the lead hand totally, and just play the left foot hats with the groove. Then make it busier. Then finally add the lead hand. First on quarters, and finally playing some Tony Ride cymbal stuff. Let's cut to Omar again. Making it look easy. The solo, if I'm not playing it verbatim, is actually a little less complex. It's just improvising in sixteenths over that pulse. But check out how Omar plays. When the band switches to the sea shanty refrain, as I call it, and even while Omar is playing some blistering sixteenths, he's still letting the song breathe, and crucially, making reference to the song. The best way I can imagine practicing this is keeping this in your head. <laughs> then imagine playing over it. It's not going to be the same if you're not hearing that in your head. What I actually do over this part is less important than just maintaining the intensity and highlighting the song. Of course, Omar is also able to dazzle in that circumstance, but only because he's taking care of business first. Then, at some point, you probably want to push to 110%. Get carried away. Get a little emotional.
but make sure you don't rush your drag. And make sure you end the song cleanly where it's supposed to end. So dudes, I hope you enjoyed this. And once again, if you'd like a completely free transcription of all of the beats in this lesson, just click the link below the player. We'll send that to you for free. But we'll always enjoy these. See you again real soon in another lesson of the week. Okay, Nate demo cam. F I hope uh, I can get out of here and then back in. You guys invest in real tripods. Pro tip.